In this lecture, we brought together some important pieces of thermodynamics. We saw the first and second laws of thermodynamics, we compared heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume, and we looked at some state variables. The first law of thermodynamics is something that we've been working with all quarter, the conservation of energy. If we're looking at systems with only internal energy changes, that is changes in thermal and bond energies, then we know that the change in internal energy is equal to the energy transferred to the system as heat and work. We've also seen that the amount of work energy added is given by minus the area under the pressure versus volume curve, which we can restate as an integral. The second law of thermodynamics involves entropy, and we will look at it in more detail in the next lecture. Roughly, entropy measures how energy is shared between all the modes of our system. The more the energy is evenly distributed, the greater the entropy. The second law says that the change in entropy has to be greater than or equal to the heat transferred divided by the temperature. That means for a closed system, where there can't be any transfer of heat or work, that the change in entropy is always positive or zero. If we take the entire universe as our system, then it is truly a closed system, and we learn that the entropy of the universe can never decrease, so energy tends to get distributed more evenly over time. We also saw that there is a distinction between the heat capacity of an ideal gas measured with a constant pressure and the heat capacity measured with a constant volume. We can calculate the heat capacity by taking the heat transferred and dividing by the change in temperature. If we want specific heat capacity, then we also divide by the number of moles. The first law tells us that the heat is just the change in thermal energy minus the work. Now we know that the change in thermal energy is determined by the number of moles times the heat capacity at constant volume times the change in temperature, and the work is minus the area under the pressure versus volume curve. But at constant pressure, that is just the pressure times the change in volume. We can use the ideal gas law to relate the pressure times the change in volume to the number of moles times the ch gas constant times the change in temperature. Now the number of moles and change in temperature cancel out from top and bottom, and we find that the heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to the heat capacity at constant volume plus the gas constant. This equation tells us that if we heat a gas at constant pressure, only some of the heat goes into raising the temperature, while some leaves the system as work. Finally, we learned a little more about state variables, which are also known as state functions. You are already familiar with some state variables from the ideal gas law. If we have a fixed number of moles of an ideal gas in thermal equilibrium, then we only need to know two variables to know everything about the system. For example, if we know pressure and volume, then we can calculate the temperature. The key point about state variables is that they are completely determined by the equilibrium state we are in. They do not depend on how we got to that state. This is very different from heat and work, because they do depend on the particular path we follow to go from one state to another. Now that we know about heat capacity, we know another state variable for an ideal gas, the internal energy, since we can calculate it from the number of moles and the temperature. If we combine state variables, then we can get additional state variables like enthalpy. It turns out that entropy is also a state variable.